Brother Giovanni's Little Reward, How the Pretzel Was Born, written by Anna Smucker. Brother Giovanni was a happy, happy man. He loved to pray and he loved to sing, but most of all, he loved to bake for all God's creation. He was the best baker his monastery had ever had. As he mixed the dough each day, he chanted a little rhyme. Mix, mix, slap it flat, knead the dough just like that. But all was not well in that little monastery. From the classroom at the end of the hallway, the abbot's voice thundered. The bishop will be here before the month is out. He will want to hear your children say your prayers. Children, are you listening? You must learn your prayers. The tower bell clanged. The lesson was over. The children swarmed down the hallway and out the door. At the midday meal, the abbot gave a weary sigh. Brothers, he said, you know it is the bishop's money that buys the flour for our bread, the beans for our soup, and the leather for our shoes. If the children cannot say their prayers, I worry that our new bishop may be very unhappy. Brother Jerome and Brother Leo, we have all tried, but nothing has worth. Brother Giovanni, you are our last hope. You are young and full of energy, and the children love you. But, but, Father Abbot, I only know how to bake, Giovanni stammered. Pray, brother, the abbot said. God has given you many gifts. He will show you how to use them. So night and day, Brother Giovanni prayed. He prayed when he was on his knees, arms crossed, fingers touching his shoulders, but he also prayed as he mixed his dough, as he threw crumbs to the birds, and as he made his rounds in the village, where his smile could warm even the coldest house. The abbot had said to use his gifts. Giovanni's voice was as rich as the richest cream, as sweet as the sweetest honey, would the children learn if he taught them to sing their prayers? He would try. The children did stop their pushing and shoving to listen when he sang, and they clapped when he finished, but they did not learn their prayers. When Giovanni asked for Brother Jerome's advice, the other monk said, you have to put on a mean face if you want the children to listen and learn. That's what I should have done. God had given Giovanni a smiling face. The corners of his mouth would only turn up. Time was running out, though. The bishop would be visiting soon, too soon. So as he stirred the flour and water, Giovanni tried as hard as he could to look mean. In the classroom, he pulled the corners of his mouth down, but that made it hard to talk. Like little monkeys, the children imitated him. One boy rolled on the floor laughing. It wasn't long before everyone was laughing, including Brother Giovanni. There is already too much meanness in the world, Giovanni said to him. The children should be happy to learn their prayers. At festival time, he had watched the people in the village hop and skip, circle and bow. There was certainly much happiness in that. Could dancing help him teach the children? At least it would tire them out so they would sit and listen and maybe learn. So Giovanni and the children whirled and twirled. Never had any of them had so much fun. But the children still did not learn their prayers. What to do? What could he do? Now, there were only 12 days left before the bishop's visit. Giovanni could not sleep. He imagined the bishop growing more and more upset 
when the children could not say their prayers. Everything depended on him. He did not know what to do. Giovanni did know that some everyone smiled when they ate his delicious bread. Should he give the children little loaves of bread for learning their prayers? No, it should be something very special. The next morning, Giovanni was so tired from worrying and praying that he mixed way too much dough. He rolled little pieces of dough this way and that, but he couldn't think of anything to make that would be special enough. So Giovanni bent his head in prayer, looking down at his crossed arms. An idea, perfectly wonderful idea, came to him. Yes, yes, he shouted, and he worked his dough faster and faster. Roll, roll, twist, twist, praying arms, just like this. He sang, he danced. When his little pieces of dough had risen, he brushed them with water, showered them with salt, and shoved them into the oven. It wasn't long before a heavenly aroma filled the kitchen. When he carried the basket into the classroom, the children crowded around him. Now children, he said, and the corners of his mouth turned way up. Let us fold our arms just like these little arms and we will pray. If we all do well, we will each have a treat. As the days went by, miracles of miracles, the children learned their prayers. For Brother Giovanni's little rewards, pretiolas, he called them, everyone was working as hard as they could. The day of the bishop's visit dawned sunny and clear. The monastery had been scrubbed from top to bottom. The children, too, had been scrubbed until their faces shone. With great ceremony, the bishop took his place in the little chapel. One by one, the children recited their prayers. All perfect. Well done, the bishop said. Well done. God bless you, my children. God bless all here. At the great celebration that followed, the table was spread with plates of figs, bowls of nuts, and best of all, Brother Giovanni's pretiolas, those little rewards that we all know as pretzels. The end.